serious. What is up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker. This is WP Water Cooler, episode number 159. Today's topic is a con- kind of a continuation of last week's topic, and we're going to be discussing WordPress user-generated content and how to work with that, pitfalls, and all those sorts of things. Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. Oh, we have someone who hasn't been around for a while. <laughs> Mr. David Arsenault, tell us Bye. about yourself. Hello. I'm David Arsenault. I work at Zeek Interactive. I crank out code for websites, some of which allow user-generated content. Number 159. Today's topic. Turn off your uh, volume. Continuation of last week's topic. And yeah, Jason, your long time listener, first time caller. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what a rookie! <laughs> what a rookie! <laughs> Great. Tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Droit Berry. I'm the founder and lead engineer at Oso Studio, a WordPress engineering company in Austin, Texas. Come on, guys. I'm a first-time caller, okay? I, you know, I can do the rookie mistakes. <laughs> you ever done this? I have it. I have it. Russ, what about you? Uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. I just want to say, Steve, I'm very excited to get to talk to you, sir. <laughs> um, so, so, so my name is Russ. Most people uh, come on here for say. <laughs> Aw, thanks. It's not my favorite. Okay, so I'm uh, from Vegas. I do <laughs> Vegas WordPress meetup stuff, and follow me on Twitter. Awesome. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> oh, Give me the morning zoo now. <laughs> I need a reggae air horn. Hi, I'm Sarah. We followed. I'm the. Please. <laughs> <laughs> reggae air horn. Um, I'm the production manager at Zeke Interactive, and I uh, facilitate the Orange County WordPress Design Meetup first Monday of every month. Awesome. So. Say. What about you, Say? Get Seth? down, get down, get down. Yo, yo, get what's down. up? My name is Say. I don't usually talk like that. I just am appropriating, apparently. Um, yeah, I've gotten myself into a lot of trouble PC wise this weekend. Okay. Hey, I'm Say. I make WordPress, do WordPress, teach WordPress, love WordPress, and at Say Read Media and all the things. Awesome. Follow for controversial fun. What about you, Suzette? Hello, everybody. I'm Suzette Frank. I am a teacher with Girl Development, and I'm going to be speaking at WordCamp Sacramento, and I'm excited for Halloween. I don't know about you guys, but I love Halloween. I've been excited excited for Halloween since last Halloween. (laughs) Probably, yeah. (laughs) So, Steve, no one's actually working in your office because they're all here. So, what's going on, Steve? (laughs) Tell us all about yourself. I am Steve Zangan. I'm the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I lead the OC WordPress meetup, and we will be having a meetup tonight in our new office, 7 o'clock. Woo-hoo, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm Jason Don't Sticker. Take my engineer. carpet clean. Oh. Carp- take oh. your shoes off at the door. Oh, okay. Not sure how to take that. <laughs> I love that that's Sarah's plan. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me Jason Tucker over on Twitter, and I blog over WP Media Pro and JasonTucker.us. So... Last week, we were talking a little bit about um, uh, kind of building a, a business form Directory. board. Yeah, these types of things. And when the, when the, towards the end of it, we were starting to talk about, like, what happens when someone goes and, you know, starts writing content for the site? It could be a blog post. It could be a form. It could be a forum. Any of those sorts of things. How do you deal with that type of content that's coming in? And, you know, what are the pitfalls with it? Well, and, and this came about because we were really talking about scalability. So, so once you open it up to the world, let's say your site takes off, and now you have all this big flood of content, what do you do? Yep. Hey! And that can be comments. According to Wikipedia, user-generated uh. content means... <laughs> all, I, all I do is dump the table and start all over again. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> F the users. Yeah, you just pull that, pull, that, pull that tablecloth right out from under their database. Thanks. Whoop. <laughs> um, I so this is about basically like when you're creating a site that is based off of user generated content mostly, right? Not right. necessarily if you're taking that data in and using something with it internally. Or are we talking think, about both concepts? I think, or? I think we need to start by defining what user generated content is on a WordPress site. Go, Steve. Go. Well, the according most, to Wikipedia. No, no. In its in its most basic form, you've got comments. Content yeah. generated by the user uh, of a website. Okay, but in its most, I think the audience can uh, can mm-hmm. understand what user generated content means. In its most then basic. Why are we form, defining it? In it because in its most basic form, you've got comments, right? 
That is user-generated content. That is user-generated content. Though it's not going to really help you in the SEO land, but it is still content. <laughs> I know we're not talking about SEO, but it's just my obsession, so it's okay. Okay, so <laughs> beyond that, if you, you could set up a gravity form where users could generate their own posts, right? So you can have users creating posts. And I think that's really what we were ta starting to talk about last right. week. Oh, um, I, I think I mentioned WP front end or WP user front end, and I think that's what got it started. Okay. It's all your fault. Two, two so, are I, we going to talk about that mostly? Or are we at some point going to talk about data that's coming in also? Or is that oh, no, we're, we're going to have to. I mean, towards the, towards the end of, of the conversation last week, it was about sanitizing, you know, that type of data yeah. and dealing with all of that. So we're definitely going to have to um, kind of touch on those pieces. So um, to go back here, so WP user front end, let's talk a little bit about that real quick. So um, what, what kind of brought that on, um, Russ, and how can we kind of apply that to what we're doing here now? Well, well so uh, last week Chris Simon was talking about formidable forms and about how you can use formidable forms to allow people to um, upload their own content. And I mentioned a free plugin called WP User Front End, and it does the same thing. You can um, – it creates a short code, and you map that short code to say um, – give a post a title, give it some content, uh, you can add keywords, or not keywords, um, you can add uh, all your taxonomies and all your tags, and then you hit publish, and then you can hold it for edit, or you can hold it for moderation, whatever, or you can go in and edit a post after you've already uploaded it. So it, it lets you add content to a site and then edit the content as you need to go. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So, We're done. See you guys later. Yay. Bye. Uh, <laughs> well, you said something interesting. So, but Russ, you said something interesting is that when you when you have WP user front end or Gravity Forms or Formidable or anything that's letting users create posts, uh -huh. you're putting them into draft mode. Well, I yes, I always do, and it's just like a comment. You never know what somebody is going to say. So that way, I don't want somebody to write something inappropriate, or I don't want links for whatever the new adult candy is, whatever. So um, <laughs> I, I was going to say Viagra. I was going to say Viagra, but I went with adult candy. Anyway, I like adult candy. Viagra, I think Viagra, that is way better. Candy. So, so I don't want links or any bad posts to show up. So I always put them in draft mode. You don't want. You don't want. Cautious. So for comp, but for comp, you suck. You mix both comments and post there, right? I mean, comments, you want to keep out your spam about Ugg boots, right? No, I love Ugg boots. Okay, maybe you <laughs> want the spam about Ugg boots. I hate those You are dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you also don't want to stifle the conversation. Right, right, so, right. So comp which, or slow it down, which happens if you're, if you're in comments. But really, comments. So, but, okay, we're talking about posts and comments. Comments, so... Sorry. So I talked about posts always going into draft form, are you saying comments always go into moderation so that you can... So that you, can you should always add. comment in moderation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, so, so again, I like to control what's going on my site. Anybody is free to post what they want, but I like to control... Apparently what, you know, not. There's no freedom of speech on your site. Yeah. I mean... Anarchy. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> How much I'm, work are you making? Rex, do you have control issues? I didn't guess that. I have never. such control I issues. I didn't guess that. <laughs> well, it's, so it's not really about... There's a lot of reasons you want to protect the, that kind of publishing capability and a lot of liability, obviously, exposure. If I, I recently had this weekend a... Um, I, I misposted... Uh, on my social media, and that thing turned into something so fast, I didn't even realize what was happening um, in a group that I'm in on Facebook, not the WordPress group of. So you don't sanitize um, your own posts is what you're saying? Well, what I'm saying is, if, if you post, <laughs> if you allow something to be posted on your site, especially if you're not paying direct attention to it, that gets automatically posted, it can create madness, not just for for the people experiencing the post, but for you as the person who has the site. Like, if something got really bad, you know, and someone launches a DD, OS, DDS, DDoS, DDoS, DDoS attack. DDoS. And um, DDS is like a dentist, I think. Right? It's, yeah, it's <laughs> like the, it's like dance dance operation system. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. 
Anyway, my point is, is like you. There's a lot of reasons. So liability, also craziness. So if people do that and they launch an attack against your site for whatever reason, all that can happen without you knowing about it. So it's just really important to know what content is on your site because you're responsible for it. Well, I, I think to your point, say is if you're allowing people to guest blog and they're going, all they're doing is copying and pasting content across every single blog. You don't want to have that on your site for, for multiple reasons, but for the first and foremost, just for search. But isn't a guest blog, that, that's not really user-generated content. That's something you'd give a, that's, a access to the end and all that stuff going to happen. You'd give them the access to your WordPress dashboard. We're talking about stuff that's entered through the front end. Well, so, I mean, there's stuff like... <laughs> no, no, no. All, my, all my guest blogs are on a Gravity form, and they all go from the front end without logging in. Okay. And there's a yeah, site I mean, that we go if it does that. Right. Okay. So Let's talk about that. Drake, right. say that again. Oh, I just said, there's a there's actually a site that we built that's a that's a local news site here in Austin that that's how they work is everything runs through a gravity form so that if you're some random person out in the community and you see something happening or something's happening in your neighborhood uh, you may only write one post so we're not actually going to go through the process of getting you set up with the dashboard and worrying about you know do you know how to use WordPress or not uh, we just send them to a form say fill this out and if we like your article then it's going to go on the site if not then Maybe try some, you know, somewhere else. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's great. The thing is, is a lot of, is those types of like gravity forms and those sorts of things. They, you know, going back to the sanitizing piece, which is kind of taking all the bad things out. Um, that. It's already done within Gravity Forms, right? So if yeah, you're hand coding this and building this yourself, then that's a that's a concern that you're going to end up Wait, so out. Gravity Forms, for example, on Gravity Forms, if you would you be able to block certain words from posting, or are we talking about just because they're going into draft? Like, is this automatically doing a filter? Like, so if you say don't swear, use these three cuss words or whatever. I'm sure there's more than three, but let's just say three. Um, seven, actually. All, all seven. <laughs> Yeah. I don't believe that those are cuss words, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. We um, know that about you, say. I know. I'm so well behaved here. Well, we, but, had, but those, we had a project but those... where we had to build in a bunch of social features, and mm -hmm. we were able to block multiple words that people did not want on the site. Is that through Gravity not, Forms? It was not through Gravity Forms. It was BB Press. That was BB Press, OK. Yeah. So yeah. within BB Press, which is itself kind of a, its own social network, that you create, you are able to restrict um, certain words or certain types of things, is what you're saying? Yeah. Does anyone know if you can do that with Gravity Forms or Formidable? Oh, yeah. The, uh, the client... Go ahead. That, well, with uh, BB Press, the client went nuts with uh, all kinds of, of profanity and, and uh, near profanity. But uh, with Gravity Press, you would have to add that in yourself. Gravity Press? Gravity Forms. Gravity yeah, with, with so, gravity forms, but there, there. Are, and if you do, a, if you do a search on the on the repo here on the you know the uh, the plugin directory, there are to search for like post word filters. There are filters mm -hmm. that are out there, and this is stuff that's yeah. like these are hooks that are available within the various you know forms that you could set up and say, here's my list. Look through this list. If it like, see something bad, it could even be like a a competitor's name that you want to make sure doesn't yeah. show up on the site or something like okay. that. Those can be bad words. Okay, so that's that's great for text, but what if you're offering uh, an image uploader? Well, then you're that, you're really going to have to you know to filter it and look at it and make sure. Yeah, one of the things I made was uh, ended up being a near clone of Instagram, and <laughs> oh, no. the, the client wanted the thing to be published immediately with wow. with images. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, image That's filtering fun. is like a whole other world. Yeah, it's called moderation. Yeah. yeah. You definitely have to moderate. You but keep the, using this word. I do not think it means <laughs> what you think it means. <laughs> it means you got to have somebody watching the site at all hours. Yep. So what about data that is not necessarily like controversial, but is just like the wrong data? Obviously, within like gravity forms and things like that, you can restrict fields to be certain types of data, numerical, blah, 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 set all sorts of things for that. Validation. Yeah, is that, is that the same thing as sanitizing data, or is that just, that's not even, because it's not coming through, it's not even getting accepted, right? Yeah. 
So, yeah, it's more putting the work on the front end rather than having someone moderating and trying to figure out, oh, they really meant this city and they actually put in the state or, you know, that sort of thing. That's kind of where you do a little bit of validation on the form and even give them drop downs and that sort of thing that already has these things filled in versus a free for all for, you know, like, here's a taxonomy, free for all, put in whatever you want. Oh my gosh, like, that'd be crazy. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like you want to make sure that you're, you're kind of limiting them. Or allowing them to provide suggestions if there's if, if they feel that they need to add in, you know, a new type of phone or a new type of car or a new type of whatever that they're you know putting into that form. What are some other types of um, user generated content besides what we're talking about? Video. Ooh. Actually, How do you sanitize that? Yeah, I, I, Jason Tucker, I would like to know because you had a, a video blog that you were trying to do. I uploaded a video and it never got published, but I would like to know. <laughs> That's I would like to know. wants to know why. That's I different. Like, I would like to know why my video didn't pass your sanitization filter. Oh no! Actually, it didn't. It didn't pass as terms of service. That's what. It didn't pass. <laughs> I I saw this thing from Russ. I don't know who Russ is. I never actually did anything with it. I think he just is like, oh, it's Russ. Mm. Hmm. So, okay, video. Uh, what about likes or voting and things like that? If you had a, a Reddit type of function on your site, I mean, yeah. there are plugins that do that. Sanitize a like. Uh, I'm not. Uh, that wasn't the question. He said, "What oh. what other types of user generated content are there?" Yeah, well, uh, oh. I think with those, it's more of detecting: is the person voting 500 times? Are you allowing them mm -hmm. to only vote once? Yeah. Can they vote once per IP address? Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And same with you know, same with uh, being able to post stuff. You wouldn't want somebody to be able to post over and over and over again super fast. You would right. say, hey, you know what? Thanks for you know submitting your content. We really appreciate it. But you're going to have to wait 20 minutes <laughs> or more, Russ. I'm sorry, so I have nothing to do on Sunday night. <laughs> there is already a built-in filter in, I think, WordPress core that, that uh, detects comments. That co If the same comment comes in more than once within a certain time span, it doesn't allow it. Yeah. You can also block like IPs. I don't think you can block words on comments on... You can actually block words. Yeah. I always turn I always turn that's comments that's off. That I never even oh. use them. So I'm like, There's I don't the... know what you can block. Who cares? Turn that shit off. Yeah, I, I you can a... block adult candy. <laughs> adult candy, I love it. <laughs> I love the word adult candy. <laughs> I, I no, have. A... Wait, wait, wait. So, so if if you go. Sarah has something to say, damn it. <laughs> if you go into your discussion settings inside go. of WordPress, it actually says comment blacklist, and it says when a comment contains. Any of these words in the right. name, URL, whatever, block and, it. And Thank Russell Aaron's Russell email address is in there by default. It's actually in WordPress <laughs> corner. <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. Actually, they're going to add it to <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, Russ. Russ I didn't know you were you changing off. your name. We're cutting you off, Russ. Sarah, <laughs> what do you got? All right, so besides spam and bad words and things of that nature, are, yeah. There are other things that we need to worry about people inputting into your site, right? Like, we're, I, I know there have been multiple like cross-site scripting alerts Sticky from gravity things. forms and jet bobby maps. drop tables. Yeah, yep. yeah, bobby, yeah, little yeah. bobby tables. <laughs> <laughs> let me find, let me find that XKCD. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that was great. Show notes. Your, your kid, oh, little bobby, bobby drop tables. tables. Drop tables. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for those of you who don't get the inside joke, it'll be in the show notes. Thank you. And it's yeah. definitely worth looking at because this is hilarious. <laughs> XKCD is for the greatest. The so front end we... stuff, I've, I've had to program it from scratch. And I've had to <gasps> worry about that sanitization. Uh, WordPress recently has uh, released a whole bunch more types of ways to sanitize your data. So I. Tell us about them, David. <laughs> it's all stuff like esc underscore html underscore underscore. Okay, actually, I didn't mean spell out the actual command. That. I said, can you just tell us what they do? <laughs> that's going to not necessarily make for great shows. He's like, okay, everybody grab the audience. Audience. follow along. Yeah. <laughs> for the audience that, 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 that doesn't have any idea what we just said, it's, it's underscore underscore. Oh man! <laughs> so she used, used to. to come more often. <laughs> so, she used to have to program all this stuff herself, and, oh, and no. we finally got say to stop programming stuff herself and using plugins now. So That's now we have to sell David on on using plugins. Through plugins. the arc of this show, I would just like to point that out. Like, hey, I make the, the plugin. 
<laughs> I'm used to do, and now I'm just all plug in. You've seen it here happen here. Well, the the problem with a lot of the programming that David does is that there is no plugin to do it. So David ends up making the plugin. So when he does that, David is the plugin. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So so David. How do we why, sanitize why, David? Yeah, <laughs> David, why do you? <laughs> When, when you sanitize an input, what does that do? What is the function of it? How does that work? Well, any time you're going to output data, you need to, you need to make sure that it's not going to break stuff. So if we're printing it out to a web page, you need to make sure that it's not trying to sneak in JavaScript that will make you order baby shoes on Amazon. What if I that. want Ugg boots? <laughs> then, yeah, that goes without saying. That's always good. Will put the smack down on the Uggs. <laughs> Don't talk Uggs, man. You're from California. Database, you you are supposed to appreciate that. Bobby Tables. Well, Steve, what's your size? <laughs> I want to order some for you. <laughs> well, well so, so, so David, what you're saying is, is you're saying that you run this wholesome site where you want to let people list their their whatever on your directory, and it says what is the address to your www website, and instead of putting their ab their website, they put an affiliate link to their Uggboot site or whatever, <laughs> and so you want to sanitize that and make sure that it's not going somewhere or, or somewhere it's not supposed to go. Or they drop yeah. in HTML containing PHP that drops your entire database. You they could do that. My mind. Yeah. There's other sneaky things. There's yeah. uh, uh, Other languages have, have characters that look a lot like familiar things from what we, we see in English. So like the, the Greek question mark, it looks the same as a semicolon. Oh, wow. Oh, that's crazy. So if, if you want to engage in hijinks and tomfoolery, you can copy <laughs> and paste that into a, a co-worker's uh, terminal while they're, they're off getting coffee, <laughs> and you'll break their code, and they, they won't see why. Wow. Steve, wow. thanks for hiring this guy so he can wow. keep them off the streets. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have never done um, that. I, you I know what's really funny, guys? I need, I, need to, I, need to, I need to go. I've got to participate in some hijinks and tomfoolery. <laughs> well, well, I got some like luck for you. It's like the digital equivalent of toilet paper in someone's house. It's what you just talked about. So, You're like, so, I'm going to fix your tables good. <laughs> so, so you never question. set someone's keyboard layout to left-handed Vorak while they were away? I have set their system <laughs> to Zaf Dingbat. <laughs> it's kind of similar. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I just never speak. So, 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 David, the, the other side to this is once somebody inputs that, you're cleaning it and kind of validating it. On the front end, you have to escape and sanitize that way. Can you talk about that? That's right, yeah. So uh, things like quotes, they have power. <laughs> Straight quotes, they can, they can break your website. So uh, if you let a, a user up, upload their own HTML, they can host the site just by forgetting uh, an angle bracket or a quote. Hose? You know, I gotta say, yeah. I don't think Hose. letting users implement implement input HTML is ever a good idea. Maybe I it is. Yeah, I really don't. Unless you're a developer. developer. Yeah. So, well, WordPress has all manner of escaping functions. So you can make it so uh, it it gets turned into character entities. So you type an angle bracket, and it comes out as the the ampersand GT semicolon. Nice. And you'll have all this this. Uh, what looks like line noise on your, your site instead and, of broken and, HTML. Every time someone put, every time someone puts a tag bracket, it just puts the Zeke interactive logo every time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the core. I have though I have uh, uh, broken well I mean broken temporarily but broken um, sites uh, of course obviously broken like CSS and whatnot by just having you know the wrong thing in a post. What's that noise? <laughs> And then you're like all of a sudden, you're like, mark. what happened here? Because, like, a post read something as a, what's a Greek question mark? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I didn't, I was Suzette, obviously, because she's making that face. So okay. it was obviously Suzette. All right, so we've talked about inputting this data. We've talked about sanitizing the data. Let's quickly, we got five minutes left. Let's talk about actually displaying this data. So, you know, we... You know, in our previous discussion, we were talking a little bit about using something like Gravity Forms to take this and then um, put it in as a custom post or a custom po or using a custom post type to display it. Now, displaying the stuff, you know, the idea is that you can put in the title, 
you could even craft the title up a certain way if you wanted to. And then getting the uh, you know the actual post content itself um, you know displayed too. So what have you guys have done to do this sort of thing? For me, I've used something like uh, advanced custom fields to you know collect a lot of this data and then be able to output it. And anybody else used anything else or have done similar stuff? ACF for the win. Yeah. Is there another way to do it? Well, no. My <laughs> there is there's custom <laughs> yeah. meta boxes by Web oh, well, Studios. Yeah. yeah, there's that too. Yeah. But is there a good other so way to do it? This guy from a VIP, WordPress VIP cornered me at a party and told me about uh, the, the VIP uh, way of doing custom fields. That's the way they do. What's the VIP way of custom they, fields? The, the, they erase them, throw them on the ground, and add them again. That's what they do. They, they have their own uh, plugin that does it in a, a database-friendly way. Advanced custom fields, it... Uh, there are some long-run performance implications with it, but yes, there are. if you want to add in extra I've always had a problem your, with your cat blog... Because of the way that Advanced <laughs> Custom Fields builds its fields, I've never liked that plug. I know Steve uses it all the time and loves it, but custom fields are so easy to make. If you're at a development level where you're trying to make advanced yeah. custom fields, I think that making the actual custom field itself is so many times easier than using advanced custom fields because of what it does in the data. I'm obsessed with the database and the purity of that, and advanced custom fields make some ugly entries. They are, but let me tell you what the advantage of advanced custom fields is. It's UI. So on the front end, when, you're, when your users are editing the content, it's way, it's way easier. You can, boxes, you can make custom, custom... Yeah, but if you're yeah, quiet, it, you can go in later. That's, that's it. It's yeah. the... What just happened? Right, I, I think no we just reset. I think we <laughs> right now, but I'm back. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Google right. so, so the the other thing that I don't like about advanced custom fields is there's actually something you have to write to where you pull the information from the database because if you just echo the field and that breaks, you're not going to show your data. Or if it's, you if you delete advanced custom fields, that stuff is kind of not there anymore, it, even though it's still it, there. It can, it can, it, there is a tricky yeah. development process with yes. it, yes. Yeah, and that's... And that was the long way to not, say that. Is Thank that, you. what about sanitizing that data? What about sanitizing your face? Well, I do it every morning. The nice thing about using a plugin as well is that they also help out with, with making sure there's some help, you have some backup making sure all the, that stuff is sanitized. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Yeah, but then... Okay, so they sanitize the data for various things, but are they sanitizing their own data to be good data and usable if you're not using the plugin anymore? Yeah, we're getting too far into custom fields. Sorry. No, that's fine. I think we I think we have a topic for next week's show. We're so amazing lately. We have we have so many about. topics for next week's show. Oh my gosh, we might get a schedule like together. What? <laughs> what? No, no. We could do this for 159, okay? We're not starting at 160. That, that'd be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, just as a side note, I would like to point out that we never celebrated our third year anniversary because apparently we didn't care anymore, but, like, we've been on the air for more than three years. That's all That's I want to say. Amazing. That's amazing. That's incredible. Hey, what does your shirt say? Who's? It says food. Dang. Food. A la oh. the fighters. Couldn't see oh. the uh, the, the hair like was covering up the OS. It's because you're a foo, yo. <laughs> this is my Steve shirt. She, she she has a knockoff Foo Fighter shirt. It I just was gonna say I, I listen I listen to the Foo. <laughs> this is this is actually the opposite of a knockoff Foo Fighter shirt. This like I came directly from Dave. Yeah. So. That is that is official merchandise, y'all. <laughs> that is official. Super official. Bought at his special happy birthday <laughs> show. Uh what? He ironed on all those letters and so on. That wow. is right. That is clear. Wow. Look at that wow. time. We, we that is time. it for today, folks. <laughs> Thank you all for being on the show next week. Join oh. us as we talk about custom fields and dealing with custom, and custom your mom. content and stuff. Make sure you go to our website at wwatercooler.com. Click on the links there. If you have nothing going on on Thursdays, you can go check out our other show that we do over there too, WP Blab. And thank yeah, you Jason all does. for being on the show. For the don't rest. forget to sanitize your date, your, your stuff face. before you input it. Your